guys. Um, today we are transplanting tomatoes and on top of transplanting I'm also going to show you how to fix a leggy plant. In my last video I kept calling them spindly which I say all the time but the correct term is leggy. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do it, how to fix something if it's leggy and also how to transplant a seedling um, with the least amount of stress on the seedling itself or its roots. So I hope you stick around. Okay. So the first thing and uh, something that I've gotten a question on a couple times is what type of soil do you use after the initial seed starting soil? I use regular potting mix. This is the Expert Gardener. It is, I found it at Walmart. It is um, not expensive. I think this was $5 for one cubic foot. And then it's actually cheaper if you get the two cubic feet, but they didn't have that. Um, it was sold out. So, um, pot-wise, these are all actually from last year, year before. I reused them. Some came from Walmart. Some came from a nursery. Um, just reuse what you have. Just make sure it's something that's big enough to where you really won't have to transplant it again until you put it in the ground. Um, you could even, if you were planning on having it in a pot uh, for like its entirety, you could go ahead and plant it in that size pot now. Uh, mine are going to be going in ground in a garden. So this is the size that I'm using. I'm not even sure if it says what size it is. But these are what I got them at the store in. So I know they'll be good for the duration. Um, and then I just have them in trays so that I can water them inside because these still are still going to be under grow lights um, until it's warmer outside. It's getting warm enough during the day almost, but at night it's still getting in the upper 30s, so that's still way too cold for um, plants, even in my greenhouse. Um, it just gets too, too cold. So these are going back inside, but what I'm wanting to do first is I'm actually going to put some soil in all of these and then set them in the sun to kind of heat up the soil so that it's the same temperature as what's going to be um, the soil of the plants right now inside. That way we're not shocking them. Um, so there's really no rhyme or reason to it. I'm literally going to take the soil and throw it in. Okay, so I let my soil heat up and here are all of my tomatoes. Um, and one thing you want to make sure of is to label if you do have to transplant because the thing that I always forget to do is label so then I end up not knowing what any of my plants are so as you can see they are all growing great um, but some of them are a little tall a little taller than I would like so I'm going to show you how to go ahead and fix that so Get your new pots and I also so let's do we're gonna do this one first these are super delicious but I want to show you that these already have excellent roots and the reason I like using these in particular this year is I don't have to do anything I just have to pick them up out of um, the tray so absolutely nothing is happening or stressing out the root system at all so you can see another one you just want to make sure if you have something that's a little leggy oh also right here I left these on today just to show you guys these are the um, they aren't the true leaves they're the little beginners once you have your true leaves which are these you can go ahead and pluck those off and it's really going to make um, your plant go crazy on growing. So, if it's leggy and even if it's not, you want to put it down in the new pot to where you're going to be able to cover up a lot of that long stem. And this is the same for whenever, let's put this on here, for whenever you're planting them in your garden. Or raised bed when you plant your uh, tomato plant you actually want to bury it all the way almost up to where the leaves start 
and that's not for every plant, but that's specifically for tomatoes. And then just cover it up. And then whenever I'm done, I'll give it a really good water. And you can see here, this is the difference. Like potting soil will have uh, different things in it where the um, seed starter that I had used doesn't have any of that. But now that these are um, established, really doesn't matter. Okay, so there is number one. Only 43 more to go. Okay, so this one, for instance, is not super tall, but again, right here are those little starter leaves. You just want to go ahead and just pinch, pinch them off. And then this one actually won't have to be, have anything extra done to it, but it's, oh, you can't even see, it's still going to get buried. Carefully. This will be a little easier to show you since it wasn't as leggy. So right there is perfect. Um, that's about how much you want sticking up out of the soil on an ideal little tomato plant. And these are, I'm super excited about these. This one is the champagne bubble. I have uh, three of them. I'm really excited about them. And one last thing, and then I'm gonna get busy and finish all this. You can see this one has another one that's growing. Um, you can still save that if you're very careful. Um, and I may not be able to save it, but you want to very slowly pull it out. And you can see there's the root system. It hasn't compromised the other root system. And then take your pot and you make it deep enough to where you can sit this in without squishing that root. And then just cover her up. So I finished with all of my tomatoes. It ended up being, I think, 50 tomatoes. I thought I had less. I started with more. But I already knew I was going to run out of room. And <laughs> I ran out of room. Uh, so all of my tomatoes are inside. And I have had to transplant and move everything else into the greenhouse. So I'm just going to try different ways to keep it warm. It's more than warm during the day. I actually have to unzip it a little bit. So I'm hoping by trying some different ideas um, I can keep it warm enough at night. My house is cold so it's not going to be that big of a shock I don't think but I'm getting ready to water them and so I thought I'd show you how my other plants are doing since <laughs> I had to move. Okay, so inside, didn't know I was going to be showing you the rest of my plants. It was for the moment, so like I still have to clean all this up from last year. But we have the celery, which really is not doing anything. And then these are my sprouting broccoli, sprouting cauliflower, and um, purple cauliflower so all this is going to get transplanted i'm just running out of time for today but um yeah these are going to get transplanted i don't think those are going to do anything um all of these are my eggplants so the three in the square are my casper eggplants i have an orange um one of my rosa biancas actually came up and then these are the oswald yeah so um those are going to have to stay warm. And then down here, I have both of my green globe artichoke, both of my red star. And then those are both self-blanching cauliflower. And then over here, I have, these are amazing cauliflower. So both those are amazing. These are Brussels sprouts that are going to have to get transplanted. 
And then these are all my peppers. Again, these are going to be the ones that I'm more worried about on staying warm. Um, the cauliflower and broccoli and Brussels like cooler weather. These do not. So this and my eggplant are what I'm most worried about, especially since these are growing really well. And then down here is just more self-blanching. Um, they're all self-blanching cauliflower. I'm hoping for the best. I have a little Dollar Tree thermometer in here that I'm going to try to uh, monitor as well as I can. But hopefully they all survive. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you all next time. And I will definitely bring you along for whether these survive in March in a greenhouse with no heat or not.